Hello and welcome to Safe Pasture. I'm glad you joined me today. We are launching a brand new series called The Holiest of All. And I think that this is going to be just a game changer in your walk with God. I know the information I'm about to present really has changed my perspective of even my daily walk with God. And I'm hoping that I will be able to present it in such a way that you will understand the impact on your own life too. What we're going to talk about to begin with, there's kind of an introductory couple of videos before we actually get into the main heart of what I want to cover through this series. But what I would like to begin with is to talk to you about what a lot of people would term an Old Testament uh, name or term, which is the tabernacle. And I don't want to dwell too long on a lot of the, um, that we could go on forever just talking about the tabernacle. But what I want to do is give you an overview of the tabernacle and the furniture that was contained in the tabernacle, because a lot of times we relegate that, those things to, oh, that was Old Testament, that has no relevance to my life. Well, when I came to understand what the tabernacle was really about. I mean, why did God, here's a question to ask yourself. If the tabernacle is irrelevant to my daily walk with God, then why was God so adamant when he told Moses to come up on Mount Sinai and take down the pattern of the tabernacle in heaven? I mean, he was talking about details that he wanted this tabernacle to be specific down to measurements of the structure uh, down to the um, furniture that was in there down to who was allowed in each chamber of the tabernacle or the outside court and so we're, we're going to really explore that because that's not just in the shadows of the old testament and the old testament contrary to popular belief it's very relevant to our, it's as relevant as the New Testament. Uh, it, it, Jesus did not just kick it to the curb and say, okay, now I'm here and this is all that matters. So what I want to start with is, you know, the tabernacle actually has the whole plan of not only your salvation, but your walk with God laid out in the tabernacle. I just find that amazing and just an incredible revelation. And let's think about this. The tabernacle was the place of worship that God instructed Moses in every detail of how to worship him. We're supposed to, our lives are supposed to be just an expression of worship, our very lives. And I'm not talking about, when I say worship, I'm not just talking about what, what a lot of people, what comes to mind is, oh, you know, you sing some songs, and hopefully they're about God and you know and we're done with worship no no worship is supposed to be your very life uh, you know how Paul talked about that you know we are living sacrifices well a sacrifice is not just kind of a one and done and then you move on a sacrifice if we're living sacrifices that means it's ongoing and so is the worship along with that lifestyle so the tabernacle was actually, I thought this was a, an interesting distinction because I used to get the tabernacle early in my early Christian years. Um, I wouldn't even distinguish between the tabernacle and the temple. It just, they almost seemed interchangeable. And since there wasn't a lot of teaching coming through like the, the church uh, from the pulpit, I really didn't see it as relevant and to me it was just like okay the tabernacle was a tent and <clears throat> excuse me and the temple was a permanent structure but other than that they seem to be pretty much served the same purpose but when you realize that the tabernacle was God's design and the temple was built by man that already kind of sets them apart and we're not going to go into a discussion of the tabernacle versus the, the temple. But if you think about the, tab the word tabernacle in the word 
I'm sorry, in, in Hebrew, it means it's both a verb and a noun. So a tabernacle is a thing where God dwells, and to tabernacle means to dwell or to abide. And the goal of the tabernacle in this journey, this, this walk that God lays out with the tabernacle, the goal is to ultimately get to the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat. And, you know, the solution to every problem is there. It's at the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat. I wanted to give credit where credit is due because I uh, got a lot of this outline that I'm about to present about the tabernacle. Some of it's mine, but some of the some of the points uh, was a woman named Orna Grin, Grinman, and she is a Messianic Jew that actually lives in Israel, and she was teaching about the tabernacle one time, and it just it just stunned me. It just turned, it turned my understanding about my relationship to God on its head. And I never realized that the tabernacle, the furniture, everything is a journey and it represents the Christian walk. And there are no shortcuts. That's one thing I want to bring up was back when I was in the early days of me being a Christian, there was a song that we would sing, a contemporary Christian song, and it was about kind of about the tabernacle. And so when I would think when I was listening to Orna talk and trying to get the tabernacle and she would talk about the different pieces of furniture, I remember this song would kind of pop up in my head because it was a catchy tune and, and we did it at church a lot. And I realized as she continued to teach that I don't think this song, I was like, what's wrong with this song? Because... It's not going along with the pattern of the tabernacle. I'm going to read to you the words, and then later on you'll see, and maybe even today we can get into that if I don't run out of time. But it was called Take Me In, and here's the, here's the verses. It says, Take me past the outer courts into the holy place, past the brazen altar. Lord, I want to see your face. Pass me by the crowds of people and the priests who sing your praise. I hunger and thirst for your righteousness, but it's only found one place and then it's and then the chorus was take me into the holy of holies take me in by the blood of the lamb take me into the holy of holies take the coal touch my lips here i am the flaw the major flaw with this presentation of the tabernacle journey though is that it presents a lot of shortcuts like where it's saying take me past the crowds of people Take me past the priests to sing your praise. I just want to get to the Holy of Holies. And as you'll see through our teaching, that is not possible. You can't skip one step. And it reminds me, and I'll probably touch on this later, but it reminds me about what Jesus said. Oh, I do have it here. John 10, 7 through 10. Jesus, it says, Then Jesus said unto them, Again, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. But when we go back to verse 9, uh, okay, no, I'm sorry, verse 8. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. And, okay, yeah, I don't have the right scripture exactly. It's along those same lines. But if you remember when Jesus talked about, you know, if, a, if someone gets in by climbing over the wall, like a hireling or a thief, they're going to try to come in not by the door, but they're going to try to find another opening. And that's what this reminded me of because, you know, if somebody doesn't come, if they try to get in your house and you're not opening the door to them, the door isn't open and they try to bust out a window or, or you know, come in some other place, um, that's not good. That's usually not looked upon. You, they, they look like an intruder. They're trying to break in instead of coming in basically legally so let me just back up a little bit I did get ahead of myself 
the tabernacle journey, this is what's, what's so wonderful about the tabernacle. As we go through the journey of the tabernacle, from the entrance, the door, all the way to the mercy seat, the Ark of the Covenant, you're going to see that this journey shows you where you're at in your relationship with God. Like, where are you? Are you on the outside? Are you somewhere in between? Are you, are you at the Ark of the Covenant? Where are you at with God? Um, and the outer court basically was, it was fenced in, the court was. So basically, if you're not in the outer court, then you will be out in the world. Okay, so to get into the outer court, and the outer court is the court that's around, surrounding the tabernacle. If you're in the outer court, that means you're, the lights have come on. You're wanting to get out of the world. You're wanting to get in. You're wanting to get into the things of God. So the, the scripture I did read you, though, is about that entrance, the entrance into the outer court. Jesus said, I'm going to read it again. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. I actually found a commentary, the Ellicott's commentary, and he said, it, 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 they seem to me not the door for the sheep, but the door to the sheep. So Jesus is saying, I am the door to the sheep. In other words, I'm the door that lets the sheep in. I am the door that the sheep can enter by. And Jesus says, all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. And the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and destroy. On they come, they might have life and have it more abundantly. So you see, he says, I am the door. If any man come in, enter in, enter in, he shall be saved. So when we look at the door to the outer court, that's the door. Jesus is saying, I'm that door. Isn't that amazing? I, I just love that. And then in John 14, 6, Jesus, it says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. So Jesus is the way. And we are talking about the way through the tabernacle, the way being symbolic, the tabernacle totally being symbolic of our walk with God and our journey with him. Um, now, the pulpit commentary is saying that Christ explicitly says that the entire goal of this wondrous way of his is the Father himself. So Jesus is the way to the Father. And as we'll see as we journey through the tabernacle, that is the goal, to get, to get in the presence of the Father. From the Father he came to the Father he was moving not for his own sake only, but also as the king, Messiah, for all his subjects. And he also suggests here that mankind generally, as well as his disciples, are anxious to find their way to the Father's house, to the Father's heart, such as to resting and rejoicing in God and sanctification in their entire con conception of him and relation to him. So Jesus wants us to get to the Father's heart, to know, to know what it means to be in loving relationship with Him, and that to be completely, totally satisfied and filled to the full. That's what Jesus, He's providing a way back to the Father. Now, if you remember in the um, Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve sinned, God had to expel them. He could not be in the presence of evil. When we look at the tabernacle, we're going to see that that is the way back. That is the way back to the Garden of Eden. That is the way back into the presence of God. And it's a fascinating journey as we see that God just gave us everything we would have to have in order to have a fulfilling, complete 
relationship with him that not only are we reunited with him, but we find purpose and meaning in him and in him alone. I only got to the first step of this. Hopefully next time we can cover a few more. Thank you again for being with me. And I can't wait to see you at the next episode. God bless.